Uh, this year was the first year uh, since 2012 that our membership didn't decline. It actually was flat uh, from the year before. So we're excited and hopefully we can uh, turn the tables and start now going back upwards. And again, I just want to hop in for those of you that are watching this webinar at a later date. I just want to mention we are on slide one. We just opened the presentation. All right. Okay, so uh, I think hopefully all of you, this is not a surprise or shock. Uh, we had uh, our first overnight camp at the new property at the Dale Earnhardt Environmental Leadership Campus at Oak Springs. This summer we uh, did a residential camp, overnight camp for about 280 campers this summer. And uh, that was very exciting. We did some some uh, changes up there uh, with the property to, to make that possible. And also very exciting, uh, we had a long tradition in Hornet's Nest Council of doing day camp here at the office in our pod village that's behind us. And we started that back uh, two summers ago. And this summer, uh, we had 187 kids attend in one of the two weeks uh, here at the pod village. Village. And we'll be continuing both of those next year, or this coming summer for 17. There'll be three weeks of day camp in June here at uh, the Pod Village, and there'll be uh, a month of residential camp up at the camp in Statesville. So moving on to our program, sorry, our, our slides are on a little bit of a delay, uh, so please bear with us. Thank you so much. Uh, so this year we uh, have been very busy, those of you who have been, had fortunate enough to meet one of our program team staff led by Taryn Rimland. Uh, we had a goal of serving about 1,500 Girl Scouts uh, through our program department. Uh, and as you can see from this slide, we. Uh, well exceeded that, and so just under 6,000 girls were served through programs. Uh, those were programs delivered uh, by various program partners that we have across our, our footprint, um, and then ones delivered at one of our sites also. And we hope to continue that and make sure that we're hitting all the corners of our council in this year and in the future. Uh, also something to note, December 1st, uh, our new FYI for the spring will be out, so make sure you go onto our website and, and check that out so you can see the exciting program opportunities for the spring. So we had some property uh, things that we did this past year. Uh, we remodeled a picnic pavilion that was on the back of our property and put in a new gravel road uh, and that became our multi-purpose building during the cookie season. It's our cookie cabana, uh, but it can still be used for outdoor cooking classes and picnics. Uh, one side of it has roll-up doors so it can still be open aired. We used it a lot in our day camp this summer, so that was a very exciting project here at the council office. Uh, and that's that picture on the top left of your screen. Uh, the next one over on the right is uh, at Camp Tarhelia, which is the camp that we sold this past year. Uh, we had a generous donation uh, and we were able to put in an all-camp fire circle up at the camp at Statesville, and we uh, used that to put our Tarhelia Memorial Fire Circle together. And that seats about 150 right now, um, and it's a permanent site that's uh, close to the girl village. Then uh, you can see we did a few other things uh, at the camp. We seasonalized uh, the uh, cabins uh, so they are open all year long. So there's heat for the winter, real windows, real doors, and air conditioning in the summer, and they've been insulated. So that's a nice addition of 165 uh, year-round beds that we now have. We also did other various projects, added a, a butterfly uh, garden, which is part of the Butterfly Highway. And that Tarhelia Fire Circle was given um, by a generous donation of Shirley Bieber uh, from the Union One Service Unit for, from her family. So we thank her for that. Okay. 
So moving on to our older girl and highest awards programs, we had been the last few years uh, had you know, under 20 girls get their gold award, and we're building that program back, making it easier for girls to get their gold award, uh, streamline the process uh, so they can uh, continue to get that highest award. So this past year, we recognized 29 gold award winners, and I think we already have more than that that will be recognized at our next annual meeting in April. Uh, and we had 138 silver award recipients and 201 bronze award recipients. So I know a lot of you have attended our bronze, silver, or gold award trainings. Uh, those are also available in webinar format on our website. So I encourage you to check those out at any time if you have questions about that. Uh, and we also have a, a, a good amount of them done in person. And then for a cookie recap for last year, and guys, I can't believe we're already going to be talking about cookies as we kick that off next month, but wanted to take a moment and thank everyone for their dedication and their hard work and the amazing things that the girls did last year to the cookie program. So here's just a quick overview to celebrate. Um, one of the biggest things for us, you know, that thanks to our hardworking girls, that our PGA, that per girl average, has really increased over where we were two years ago. Um, and, you know, as the situation was, we actually had one of the lowest PGAs in the southeast region um, and honestly nationwide um, but we obviously knew that that our girls here could could knock it out of the park and I think with some great feedback from you all our membership and and in partnership with little, little brownie developing some new um, opportunities to the cookie program again you guys really knocked it out of the park this year and could not believe that this year's average was 137 so um, congratulations to our cookie bosses overall um, our council collectively sold over a million packages of cookies and again for our new online program digital cookie great to see some increased engagement on that um, the, again the girls have really been jumping on there and, and loving that new format where they can sign up for digital cookie, um, send emails online, do cookie transactions, and, and accept credit cards all through digital cookie. So we, of course, will have that program again um, for you as we move into the 16-17 cookie season. And also want to mention our, our cookie donation program. Obviously, that's, that continues to be a strong program here at Hornet's Nest and just really proud of the work that the girls do around that program as well. And then as we transition into, um, you know, our, our upcoming year initiatives, I do want to take a moment, and, and I'm sorry I didn't mention when we were introducing Christine and Gail and myself, Colleen, um, I, I did want to mention that Angela Woods, your fearless leader, our CEO, certainly wishes she could be here with us tonight. Um, as we plan these open membership meetings, um, she actually got called away to a CEO conference, um, and she has been sending us messages all day, and I know she would want to send you her hello and, and of course, um, send you her deepest gratitude for all that you all are fabulous volunteers um, that keep Girl Scouts going. Thank you for all that you've done. Um, obviously, in that quick recap, um, you know, huge for us to say that membership is flat. And, and for those of you, I know I've got some cookie folks on the call. We like to say in the cookie world that flat is the new up. So we are thrilled um, that membership, you know, we've kind of stemmed the bleeding there since 2012. Um, Hornet's Nest, like, very similar to our national um, Girl Scout numbers, have been on the decline. So again, thanks to heroic efforts by um, a lot of recruitment folks that and volunteers that are on the phone. Um, thank you so much for really shoring up those members with us um, this past year, and we look forward to, to continuing that in the future. So excited about membership being flat. Um, the program engagement, as you saw, has just been tremendous, and really appreciate you all supporting um, you know, those, those great programs that I think at the council level with our, our program team, Katie and Taryn, have really been working hard to bring you guys some great new innovative programming, um, getting that engagement on high awards and turning that around and of course camp we're so thrilled to be able to celebrate um, the return of summer camp and just thanks for for those of you that have, have sent your wonderful daughters and entrusted um, them to our care we had a great summer with with our camp program 
So now that we have recapped 2015-2016, we want to jump into um, some of the initiatives that we're going to be working on this year. And again, uh, a lot of this was based on feedback, of course, from, from the membership on the directions we needed to take and, and some of the goals that are on our list. So without further ado, I will uh, jump into that. All right, so again, this is Christine, uh, and we will, you know, this season, I uh, thank you, all of you who have been out there helping, recruiting. I know we're still not done. We definitely had a uh, few bumps uh, along the road, um, and we're, we're working to, to iron those out. I think a lot of you, and hopefully most of you have heard, that we are changing, um, we're leaving e-council. Uh, so I know that shut down at the end of September for everybody. And we are moving uh, to a sales force uh, based company and so we call that in Girl Scouts uh, you'll hear the, the term CEI customer engagement initiative and so this timeline that is up on the screen kind of helps you see those three parts um, the customer engagement initiative uh, if you're looking at that top graphic with the trefoil um, really uh, is comprised of the three things that those hands represent uh, right now we're working on the volunteer systems part of that that's the piece that e-council replaces and it um, is the part that, you know, gets us our rosters and knows who's uh, registered and, and all of those things. Uh, there's another piece that we'll be rolling out this spring uh, and uh, into the fall, which will be the volunteer toolkit, which is a really great thing that we will uh, be showing you a little video about here in a second. Um, and also we'll be changing over our website. So on the bottom you can kind of see our timeline for this process. Right now we're in data transition mode, uh, getting all of our membership and all of those things moved over um, into November. Uh, the staff get access in November to the, the system and we'll be playing with that uh, and we'll be rolling that out to key volunteers in December and, and talking about how that will affect us. We'll be doing lots of trainings. They'll be available in person and webinar format um, and all of that so people will have a lot of support through this transition. Um, and then uh, as we move uh, all of that in, like I said, in April and May and as we roll out the new Next year membership, um, the 1718, oh no, sorry, the, yeah, 1718, wow, time flies. <laughs> um, we'll be talking about our new website and, and volunteer toolkit and all of that. So the, the next slide is going to tell us a little more, it's a, it's a quick video that we're going to play for you uh, that tells you a little more about the volunteer toolkit and some, some really cool things that you're going to get with this new system. K-5 Customer Engagement Initiative has been a game changer for our council and for all the councils that are implementing it as we go into the next 8 to 10 months. Um, essentially, it has streamlined every process that we have. It's given us the ability to work not only as a staff in a streamlined manner, but also with our volunteers and our girls and our caregivers. I know for sure that a brand new troop leader will be so happy to have the toolkit. I think it's going to be an excellent introduction for volunteers into the system and to get them in quickly. One thing our volunteers have told us is they want to spend more time with the girls and less time on administrative duties, and this is really going to help them do that. So the volunteer toolkit is stocked with resources that really makes it easy to be a leader. As a leader, I'm a very busy person, and um, I'm fitting this in uh, because it's something I truly believe in that's going to make a difference in my daughter's lives and their, their friends. It shortens my time. Really, that's really what, what the Volunteer Toolkit has really been able to do for us. It just has shortened the amount of time that we're planning and spending, uh, planning for a meeting, and be able to actually just enjoy doing the meeting. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, the Volunteer Toolkit is very accessible. It takes you through all the steps. There's actually an introduction video that really helps you get used to everything. And it really helped me because being the new leader and not really knowing how the new system works, it really made everything a lot more streamlined and just made my meetings a lot easier. Our volunteer um, 
need a simple way to deliver Girl Scouting to girls. And it's critical that the processes are a part of that and that the Girl Scout leadership experience is in that. But now with the Volunteer Toolkit in particular, any troop leader of a kindergarten through fifth grade girl can seamlessly and easily online, on her iPad, on her iPhone, plan her troop meetings, you know, get ready for a meeting, grab her shopping list. Everything is intuitive, quick, easy to understand. And for us, that means the type of volunteer we can recruit and retain is different. Our existing volunteers have an easier way to deliver what before was a very cumbersome process. And we know that is going to increase our retention, increase the number of girls that we can serve, and in the end, bring a much higher quality experience. All right, thank you. So uh, hopefully that video came through all right for you, but we promise that that there will be lots of things to follow up. I did just want to talk a little bit about that video. Um, it's a few years old, so I think hope a few of you probably heard that K to 5, uh, that it was available for K to 5. That is how they rolled it out. Uh, they are working on all the other age levels, and so you'll see um, – uh, the age, other age levels since we're a little later in this process um, represented. Uh, that's just what they started with um, as a toolkit because those leaders of those beginning troops are really the ones that needed the support first. They're starting up brand new troops. They don't understand Girl Scouts, um, but they did ha are building it out. Some really cool things on there. There'll be um, digital uh, information about all the badges. Um, GSUSA is really getting away from, you know, everyone uh, needing uh, the badge books and the journal books, um, you're going to see a lot of digital pieces uh, from them that are tied to this. So some really cool things will be, like I said, doing a ton of training, things that you can watch uh, in your living room or you can come out and, and ask questions about. So we're really excited about that. I know this fall was really hard uh, with recruitment all going on paper. It was like we traveled back in time. Um, it's, and I, I know that's hard for us, but we had to do that so we could move light years ahead with this new system. You know, all of those functionality uh, of online uh, registering and, and all of those things will be with this new system. So we're really excited about that. So please look out for more information for that. We'll be now moving on to property. Uh, so the property pieces that we want to update you guys about this first slide, uh, hopefully uh, you guys have heard uh, about our new outdoor pavilion. This is a art artist rendering of the pavilion. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it uh, as you're looking at this slide. The main difference about this slide uh, uh, that you don't see here is that after we had the artistic uh, rendering done, we did decide to screen it in, uh, and so it will be a screened-in outdoor pavilion. It holds uh, about 250 to 300 people sitting. Um, if you look under the main portion of that drawing, uh, those are our tables. Uh, we'll be having cafeteria-style tables so they can roll up and be moved out of the way so it can be used as a multifunction building, whether you're eating, or whether you're wanting to do program or half and half. Uh, as you see, there'll be two entrances uh, to it, one on that front side that you see that's closest um, in the picture, and then one on the long end um, that's far to the right in the drawing. There'll be double doors uh, to enter through those areas. Uh, you can see that there's a fireplace, stone fireplace, so it'll be a nice place when it's raining, things like that, to be able to still do your campfires and those kinds of things as you guys are up there. Um, if you look all the way to the left of the drawing, you'll see uh, what looks like a red canoe. Um, and it's not misplaced, that is a, that is a canoe. Um, it won't be probably red, but uh, there's a hand washing station uh, that will be uh, made out of a canoe so girls can wash their hands and stuff. And right behind that canoe on that wall um, are restrooms. So there'll be full restrooms there. Um, and then as you kind of follow that wall al along, um, you kind of see an open part to that building. And that's a, a commercial kitchen that we are setting up uh, for food service. So in there, it's set up very um, cafeteria style. So girls will be able to, when you first come around from that bathroom, there's a cold salad bar uh, that's right there. Uh, they'll be able to go through the line. There's hot hot bar like you'd see in a cafeteria at a school. Um, 
And then all the way over to the right is a beverage station with coffee and juice and water and all those kinds of things will be supplied. The kitchen will be fully stocked and supplied supply-wise, pans and serving stuff uh, for a commercial kitchen. The only major commercial kitchen piece that it does not have is, it, is a dishwasher. It does have a three compartment sink to wash kitchen dishes. Um, so we will still be using uh, uh, compostable paper products up at the property that we will be um, composting on property. Uh, and that's just due to some permitting and things and bringing up um, a dishwasher is, is a different level of kitchen. But it will have uh, ovens and, and uh, places to cook and uh, refrigerator and freezers and all of that kind of stuff. Um, there is an ice machine uh, that is, is in there. Um, along with, we do have a, now an ice machine in the Girl Village. So when you guys are up there and needing ice for coolers and that kind of stuff, there's an ice machine in the Girl Village now. Um, and also an access to a refrigerator and freezer um, there. The only last thing that I want to talk about is where the pavilion sits on the property. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with the property, as you're driving in, um, into the main part of camp and you come to the large uh, uh, Girl Scout uh, trefoil uh, sculpture, uh, you keep driving and the road uh, splits off into two directions. If you went kind of to the left or straight, that would take you towards the luggage shelter. Um, and if you went to the right, uh, you would be going towards the parking lot. And right in the middle of that uh, split is a couple acres of property. And at the top of that hill is where this pavilion will sit. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that that site was chosen. Uh, one, there was nothing planned there on the master plan. Um, you can see this isn't a temporary building. Uh, and so we didn't want it to compete uh, when we do break ground on the dining hall. The dining hall uh, is, is located located down by the lake. Uh, so we wanted something that could be another piece once the dining hall does uh, happen. Um, and then the other thing about this p placement of the property is um, if we had put it anywhere else on property, it would have cost approximately a million dollars more than it does. This this uh, pavilion will be about $500,000. And uh, adding a million dollars to that, uh, because this is where all the sewer power electrical lines of our property all just happen to come in is at that point. So it was a lot less expensive to put it there. And it will be a great place uh, for you guys to check in groups, those of you who use the property for encampments and service unit things. You, you know, when you get into there and you have that parking lot and that luggage shelter, they want to stop and ask questions. Now there'll be a place for you guys to have them park and come talk to you. And it can always be used as a check-in point, um, even moving to the future. So we're very excited. You can see that it says coming in 2017. Uh, lots of people have asked, you know, could I get a more specific date on that? Uh, we would love to give you it. We are definitely having some struggles. Uh, we are the first camp property in Aradale County. And so building permits and things like that, uh, even though we have been building on the property, for some reason they just realized that we are a summer camp. And so uh, it has thrown our uh, people up in that county a little bit for a loop. And so things have taken a little longer. We really hope for it to be ready for, for spring encampments. I mean, that is always our goal. Uh, but we are hesitant to say anything um, just because of the permitting process. But we will definitely be giving updates and, and working with everyone as we move forward and giving you know regular time updates for those of you especially using it in the spring. So program, uh, we have lots of uh, great programs uh, that we wanted to make sure you guys know about. Uh, hopefully all of you have heard of our Girls Go Beyond program. That is our... Uh, Formerly, you know, I think we called it outreach or various other things. This is our program where we do go in and service uh, areas that have not been able to get traditional troops going. So those could be in low-income areas. They could just be in areas, um, Title I schools and things like that. So we do uh, various uh, things. We do events, one-day events through this program. We do uh, six- to eight-week programs in the schools 
after schools in line with YMCA, uh, Boys and Girls Club. And we also have year-round troops. And so uh, those that meet year-round uh, with uh, our staff facilitating those troops so we can continue to service any girl who wants to be a Girl Scout uh, through that program. So that's a very exciting program. And that is really um, sponsored and, and um, heavily funded by our United Way dollars. We also uh, kicked off a, a Latina initiative this past year. We're very excited. We have a really great uh, committee that is a steering committee giving us direction into that community. Uh, this year we have uh, lots of programs and, and opportunities in that community to service uh, that large growing population in Charlotte. So we also have the Young Women's Leadership Institute, which is a program that we do in collaboration with the Center for Creative Leadership. We kicked that off last weekend. Uh, these girls will be uh, meeting, 28 girls, meeting all year long uh, with various activities. Um, this is an amazing program for our older girls. And this is for our high school girls. They applied and interviewed to get into this program. And if anybody has worked with the Center for Creative Leadership before, they really do amazing program. And so uh, that's an exciting collaboration that we're doing with them uh, this year. And we hope for it to be uh, you know, this is kind of our cohort A group, and we hope for them to follow all the way through high school, and, and this is a multi-year program, we hope. Uh, so the other projects that we have, you know, just like you all in the community, uh, we really believe in take action projects, you know, taking it that step above the service projects that we do. Um, and so we started last year, a, a, you know, a two to four year uh, council take action project dealing with homelessness here in Charlotte. Obviously that is a big, uh, you know, thing that we have going on in, in Charlotte. And so hopefully some of you were able to attend last year the cardboard camp out, which was kind of our kickoff event. And uh, we'll be doing it again this year in November. And we have other programs throughout the year uh, to really uh, make an impact in in that area of our community. And then we also this year are partnering with some people about some social justice. Obviously with um, this is a big topic all over the United States and, and obviously, you know, really hit close to home in September when we had uh, things happen here in Charlotte. And we really want to be able to help leaders and girls be able to talk about these really difficult um, things that are going on in our society. So please look out for more things for that, programs and opportunities for trainings and that kind of stuff about those issues. And then I know some of you are like, wow, National Convention, it's already time to do that again. So yes, uh, fall of 2017, uh, in the beginning of October, uh, we will be uh, heading to Columbus, Ohio. and. Uh, there's information that will be in the FYI about this. We are, um, for those of you, we didn't do it the last convention when it was in Utah. That would have been a little far to go on buses. But um, when conventions are close, we try to take buses up there um, so we can participate. New this year, the uh, they are really changing the format of convention. Uh, daisies on up are welcome to come, which is new. Used to be 14 on up could come to convention. They're making it a lot more interactive. If any of you guys have ever been to the um, convention hall, it was really a lot of things that were geared towards councils, things that they were selling, products, um, those kinds of things. There'll be still some of that, but now they're trying to partner with other agencies a lot of things that will be available for troop leaders, program opportunities and things for you guys to learn about um, in that convention hall. So that's a difference uh, that you'll see this year. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to join us uh, on our bus trip to Columbus, Ohio next fall. So that's exciting. All right, so from, and hey guys, it's Colleen. Uh, from the product program perspective, just wanted to let you know about some exciting things coming up next year. Many of you have already heard, but we will be celebrating 100 years of girls, Girl Scouts selling cookies. So we are so excited about this. Um, you're going to see big things. This obviously will be included in a lot of our marketing and PR initiatives, um, but so looking forward to celebrating this great milestone with the girls at our cookie rally and all kinds of other fun opportunities. Um, but of course, because this is a big anniversary, you know we had to launch a new cookie. 
So uh, this may be some of your first introduction to our new cookie this year. It is the Girl Scout S'mores cookie. And guys, we're so excited about this for, for our troops to try it and for our girls to really rally around this. Um, I think it really speaks to our brand, obviously, um, you know, embracing the s'mores, which has been a part of the Girl Scout history. And now we have it in the form of a cookie. Um, so again, you'll be hearing more about this in, in our um, cookie training that's going to be launched. Uh, November 1st. So next week, we look forward to you guys hopping on to online training and then going to your service units to pick up your cookie packets for your girls. Um, but again, please be on the lookout for more information about s'mores. We're so excited to, um, to roll this delicious cookie out um, with you guys. And I will tell you, um, insider uh, tip, the troops, we did um, work really hard with Little Brownie and we did confirm that um, your troops will all be getting one package of um, the s'mores cookie so your girls can try it before you guys go into the season so the girls will be um, again speaking from a true as a true cookie boss and be able to share how delicious this cookie is so more to come on the s'mores then just want to quickly mention some things going on in the marketing world. Um, many of you receive our weekly email, which is called The Buzz. Uh, and again, that goes out every Friday. Uh, but also wanted to take a moment and mention our other publications that we do on a regular basis. That second um, image there, Forever Green, that is our quarterly e-newsletter. Um, that's a longer format publication that really kind of gets you up to speed on what's been going on the past couple of months in the council. Um, and again, that obviously goes to leaders, to parents, to donors, to alumna. Um, so that's got a little bit wider reach there for that, that newsletter. Um, the next one, these, these next two are both new for um, 15, 16. One, the H&N, that is our older girls newsletter. Again, obviously targeted um, at the older girls and has content that's relevant for them. So maybe it's older girl programs, uh, scholarship information, again, unique content for them. Um, and we, again, are polling lists of, of older girls, but if you, if you would like to add your name to any of these on our website, you can do that. Just say subscribe to um, newsletters, and we will contact you to see which ones you want to be added to. Uh, and again, last one, the Indie News, so that for that independent uh, registered Girl Scout, we want to make sure that she's engaged. She might not be in a troop setting, but she certainly can come to all of our council events um, and maybe even get plugged in with some service unit opportunities. So uh, again, this is a new um, communication, communication piece for uh, Indie Girl Scouts. And then I also want to mention Rallyhood, which many of you at the service unit level are using. Uh, we'll continue to use Rallyhood as we transition into um, CEI Salesforce. And, and again, um, I know that's been important to a lot of a lot of councils and troops to, to maintain Rallyhood for the time being. So we're definitely going to do that. Um, and then, of course, also, if you can, please join us on social. We are always looking um, for, for content. And we love to hear what your troops are doing. We love to get pictures of your your events, your meetings, all that great stuff. So we'd love to be interactive with you on social as well. Okay. Hi, this is Gail Sims. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about advancement and some of the things that we're, we're doing there. Um, we've got a couple exciting things. Hopefully the majority of you have heard about Sister to Sister, which is formerly the family campaign. So what we did is we went out to, uh, to volunteers like yourself and we asked you, you know, what did you think about the family campaign? What could be done differently? And so we brought all that information back and we made some changes to the, uh, to the program. The main change has been instead of focusing on who, who gives us the money, focusing on what the money is used for. Uh, the decision was made to, to be, you know, fully transparent, not that we weren't transparent before, but just to be proactive in putting that information out there as in regards to how the money is used. There will also be a patch program attached to that for the girls. Uh, so, you know, keep your eyes out for that and we will certainly follow up with all of you regarding that. Uh, they will get a patch based on whether or not they participate, uh, create their, uh, their bank. It doesn't have to be a pig, but any type of bank. And then the other piece of that, if we really want to do some type of, of learning around what philanthropy means and what it means to give and to other people uh, that, that may need those funds. So the Scissor to Sister, we're very excited about that. Um, so let us know if you have any feedback for us regarding that. 
So the other thing is the Beyond the Sash. So we created an alumni association. The kickoff was actually a couple of months ago at Duke Energy. That was announced in the bus, so hopefully you can keep your eyes open for, for anything related to Beyond the Sash. Um, we really want to make sure that we are keeping track of those folks who have participated with Girl Scouts in the past. And we define an alumna as anyone who has volunteered with us, a lifetime member, someone who went through the program, and we even allow men that are volunteers in the program too. So join us on LinkedIn and stay informed about Beyond the Sash. So. All right, and the one last thing that we want to, before we get to the Q&A section uh, this evening, is just wanted to tell you, we started this spring, and this came from our, our volunteers that wanted uh, to, our service unit volunteers, we started roundtable meetings. We had one in May, uh, and uh, try to get the word out there. It was kind of a grassroots effort to get the word out, but this year we're a little more organized, and so on Sunday, December 11th, um, from 2 to 5 here at the council. We'll be having a roundtable meeting. Uh, this uh, every We'll be doing this two or three times a year. And just to get people, this isn't just for service unit managers. It's for any key leadership in your service unit. Uh, and one of the big topics that we will really be diving into, one of the things we saw a lot on the survey that you guys filled out before joining us tonight was service unit attendance, how service units were working, um, just a lot of things about service units. And as we did a lot of changing this year, uh, with some staff restructuring and getting ready for our new uh, database switchover, uh, we didn't want to mess with the service units. Um, but there's some really interesting things going on around the country at other places, other Girl Scout councils. We want to bring that uh, to you and show you uh, some other ways that some councils have been really successful in, in having a lot of councils are struggling with the same kinds of things. So we're really excited. That's going to be one of the big things is diving into that um, about the service unit structure and how can we uh, maybe change it up so it can be um, a better run. Um, and then also talking about recruitment. We really want to get, uh, we know that this year was really a struggle as we were making switches over and there were, you know, misses that happened. And, and so we really want to do a deep dive with the volunteers and get your guys' feedback so we can be ready uh, for next year. And we really do want to have everything in place, trainings done, material all ready to go before the summer hits. We heard that loud and clear from all of you that you, that's when you guys need it uh, so you can uh, be ready for your fall in your various areas. So hopefully, uh, if you guys uh, want to be at that, you can. Uh, we will have more information about that. You can watch for it in the buzz and, and all of those places. So uh, we wanted to make sure you knew about that. So Colleen uh, is now manning our uh, Q&A section. And so she will, uh, she'll either uh, read those out loud or answer them uh, directly in the box, depending on how quickly they come at us. So please bear with us if, if we get a little behind or anything on that. She's trying to answer those as quickly as possible in the box so we can get any of your questions answered. And we're also, Gail and I are looking at another computer trying to, to keep it uh, um, quick and updated for you too. So let us know. And Colleen's kind of driving the, the ship here, so we'll, we'll have her join us here. And so far, guys, we've just gotten some questions about, um, one of the comments was about the Indy program, and I did just want to jump in and um, mention that that is a new a new term. You know, I think we've struggled with the, the branding around that in the past, and one of our team members um, in, the, in the membership side who has been working to really revamp that at the council level to make sure that we are providing more resource, you know, really did a deep dive into um, you know, that, that Juliet program and looked at, you know, who was registered, who wasn't, how do we get girls engaged in that program, and really challenge the rest of our departments to make sure, you know, are we offering, um, you know, an easy way for Indies or for and Juliet to get involved in, in our programmings moving forward. Um, so that is something that one of our team members really researched and, and talked to girls and, um, and felt that, you know, we really needed to rebrand to, again, raise some more awareness. But I think what you will see from us 
is, again, so, you know, just in the short term, added more resources on our website um, to talk to these girls who maybe could not tap into that troop resource, but that was able to, um, again, just they wanted to carve their own path and, and be an individually registered Girl Scout. Um, again, we've created a newsletter. Um, so really just trying to keep this top of mind. So um, any feedback, you know, as you guys get into it and, and want to continue that dialogue with us would be great um, because we certainly feel um, so many of our, our especially that, that K through 5 market, want to be in that traditional troop. And, and our goal here is, is to, of course, give the customer what they want. So if we can find that troop and, and keep that going, that's fabulous. But if we've got some, especially those older girls who say, I want to do my own thing on my own time, um, how can we make sure that we're supporting those girls as well? So thank you for the feedback around that as we continue to grow and, and really look at that program and, and figure out the best ways to message around it. Can you take that down? Sorry. And guys, we've got another question about the forms for registration being translated into Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so if you're talking about our Girl Scout forms for girl registration, we have those um, even on our website in the form section. Uh, they, are, um, avail they are available in Spanish. Um, so yeah, so we do have those. And if you need those in other formats, please you know, just reach out to the council and we can get those because we have all of that. All of our major forms, uh, we do have three bilingual staff uh, and so we do stay on top of making sure our forms are in Spanish. So uh, just reach out if you're, there's something you're not seeing, um, we can make sure to get those to you. And um, Julie, I'm glad you brought that up though. Um, you know, we want to make a concerted effort um, to to continually challenge ourselves to look at those resources um, and make sure that we have uh, multilingual opportunities on our website, you know, easier resources for volunteers to get to. I know that's something that we're looking at um, at the at the cookie program as well to make sure we do a better job of getting that out, not just to people, um, and again, you guys might not see that side, we might be doing a lot of that in-house and making sure that some of our staff that's going to support troops that might be predominantly Spanish speaking, you know, we will work with them to get them a special flyer or registration form, but challenging ourselves to be better, uh, you know, on the broader perspective and, and on our website, making sure that those resources are available to all of the membership. Um, because again, now I know we're really um, proud to say that we're trying to grow our staff members that speak Spanish and, and again, looking to, um, looking to add one more in the near future. Uh, and they are uh, fantastic to work with us and help us translate all those materials and, and troubleshoot and make sure we're saying everything in, in the right way. Um, so thank you for, for bringing that up because that's something that we want to continually um, improve upon. So, uh, like, I, like we said, please, guys, if you have questions, you can write in that text box. We're going to keep uh, trying to keep up with those. Uh, Colleen is, is reading them over. We want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. If there were, uh, there will be a taped version of this uh, that will be available for people. If they missed it, they can watch it. We'll have it on our website. And also, uh, if there's anything ever, please, uh, one of the things is, uh, you don't have to worry about what staff you have to reach out to. Uh, you can, uh, there's two main ways to contact us. You can always uh, go on our website and there's the, you know, contact us. That doesn't matter what the question is, uh, we can, we, that gets put to the right person. If you call our main number, uh, the 704-731-6500, our customer care folks, they really can answer 80 to 90 percent of your questions. Uh, I know sometimes you're like, oh, I need to call this staff member or is that person here anymore? Or you look at our website and you try to figure out people's titles. Please know, just call into the main number. Those staff are really well trained to answer your questions. So we encourage you in, to do that. So. We're going to check in with Colleen here uh, to see if we have anything else that's come up. And then I had another great question about, um, you know, some feedback around uh, learning more about what the responses were from some other service units. And again, guys, I know it's a little bit more challenging in a, in a web format, but thank you all for, for those that joined. Um, we've had three other open membership meetings where, again, the dialogue was a little bit more unique at the end. And again, depending, um, you know, whether we're here at the council office or in Union County or in North Shore, wherever we were, um, certainly we had a lot more questions that were uh, 
more organic to kind of the area that we were in. And um, but I do want to mention that Tricia, uh, who is Angela's assistant, is working on a recap document just so you guys can see, you know, some greater feedback at the higher level. You know, some other questions and concerns that were raised through the service unit feedback, and then additionally questions that were raised in some of our open membership meetings. So what we're working on right now, um, obviously we're feverishly taking notes in all of those sessions to, to gather that feedback, um, to make sure that we were addressing it, certainly at that open membership meeting, but then also um, as a follow-up, what we're trying to do is place those in kind of the big bucket so you guys could see that. So I, I know that for sure by tomorrow um, in the buzz, what we, what we aim to do is to publish a PDF of the presentation in case any of those um, slides you wanted to reuse or check out again. Um, also, we'll be posting a recording of, um, of this particular webinar um, that we're doing. And then in addition, um, again, I can't promise them tomorrow, but very soon I know um, from the executive office you'll be seeing just a recap of, of feedback. And, and again, those, those big buckets of, of hey, here's, here's what's going on, the good, the bad, and the ugly um, at, at the service unit level. So that, that is all coming soon. So as we wind up here, please, if you have questions, uh, reach out with those. And since we have a few more minutes till we end here, uh, we want to make sure to answer any questions. And guys, I got another great question about um, as we look towards the 2017-18 year, um, you guys know a couple months ago we met uh, to share with you the GSUSA's decision to raise our membership dues. And so had another great question about um, how this membership dues will affect those who honestly need Girl Scouts the most. And, and, and when we look at the Girls Go Beyond program and how we support them, again, I think there was some question about, you know, how do we make sure that there are funds? What's going to happen to funds when, again, that, that membership dues um, goes up? Are we still going to be able to support those Girls Go Beyond programs? So, yeah, so, I mean, Gail and I uh, here, you know, we are very committed uh, to making sure that any girl who wants to be a Girl Scout, money is never a, you know, obstacle for her. Uh, we've been planning for this $25 increase. Uh, at this point, we have uh, no uh, thoughts to changing any of our uh, opportunities as far as membership and uh sashes and badge books and all of that kind of stuff uh, and obviously also for programs and trainings financial assistance is available uh, for summer camp programs it is so uh, we have no plans to do that Gail can talk a little bit about the process. Her department has uh, been doing the process for, uh, not for membership, but for the books and uniform pieces. And I know that they've done a lot of uh, great cleanup and try to streamline that process. So I'll let her just talk a little bit about that. So one of the things I would add is that um, I think it's, it's we're one out of three councils in the country that actually offers financial assistance. Uh, which is, when you think about it, that's pretty incredible. And Angela is committed um, to making sure that we continue to offer support. Um, that is one of the things that, as an advancement officer, when I go out and I talk to people, that's one of the things that I talk to them about. Our collateral includes information around, if you give us this amount, this is how you can help a girl you can buy her books, you can help get her uniform. So we're being very deliberate um, around that. So what we try to do is streamline the process a little bit. If you go online um, under uh, the forms, you'll see the financial aid forms there and you can basically, you know, pick out what, what the girl needs assistance with. And then of course there's another form for adults who might need assistance um, with attending an event of something of, of that nature. Um, so, like I said, we're very committed to that. We understand that we have girls that, um, that they just need us in that way, and that's one of the main pushes for the Sister to Sister campaign as well. 80% of the money that is raised through Sister to Sister actually goes to financial aid. Um, so, 
Great. So we have another question, uh, kind of switching directions here, uh, about uh, camp facilities um, and training and how do you get, uh, how does the service units and also troops uh, find volunteer facilitators? So that's a great question. Uh, we have uh, rolled out a few things uh, that you'll start seeing. So uh, one, you can, when you're filling out your paperwork, or paperwork, gosh, we have a new double knot program. Hopefully you guys have used it. When you go ahead and reserve your property either as a service unit or as a troop, um, it asks you if you need uh, facilitators on it. And so if you do, uh, there is a charge, but if you pay those, and the nice thing about that is even if you have a troop of seven or eight you know, cadet girls who want to do the Phoenix Tower, in the past we've really struggled with being able to get facilitators up there. Um, but we really worked hard on that, so you can do that on the double not reservation system. Um, as far as service unit goes and getting your own uh, volunteers to do archery and boating and Phoenix Tower, uh, we have run some trainings. We ran some this fall in September and October to get trained on that. We'll continue to do that um, as we move forward. There'll always be training. So if you want to get your own facilitators um, uh, trained, uh, you will always have that opportunity to do that also. Uh, so I know some service units like to have their own stash of, of trainers and, and will continue to do that. So please look for more of that coming this spring. But we did have a few this fall. And then guys just had another question about online training and just some concerns too about a, a lot of trainings are web-based and not with live people. So I did just want to, you know, uh, talk about that real quickly from the product sales standpoint and then I, I want to let Christine talk about from the program standpoint because I'm sure you you um, hear a lot and, and a lot of that has to do more maybe with programs than, than even um, the cookie or, or fall product program. But just I, I, I do understand, you know, I think we used to do a lot of trainings at the service unit level and I will be honest, I know I um, have been to many of your service units too and, and have had a, a two hour presentation and I think, you know, certainly for the cookies, we definitely got a lot of feedback that, hey, a two hour meeting in November um, did not really sustain and nor was it relevant when we're really doing and, and executing the cookie program January through March. Um, so I, I hope that we came to um, an agreement and, and really try to get best practices by working with you guys and doing what I would call more of a blended model. So yes, we have online training for cookies so folks um, can you know do it at their time and leisure you know maybe if they can hop in and do a couple of um, modules in the morning maybe one you know later on that week well that's great however they can accomplish a training is good and again um, they're not they're not beholden to one particular meeting they have to come to um, just to at the council level. But then what we've also done is coupled that with service unit level meetings. So I know we're um, in the process right now of just publishing all of those um, service unit meetings that we're having. Again, I know a lot of the focus is around cookie packet pickup and, and you know, meeting those service unit cookie managers and having that face-to-face. -face. And, and I know some service units take that opportunity to do their own, you know, mini training and is it of the, the tough questions that, that really is relevant to their service unit, um, you know, to be able to answer that in that live format. So again, um, I know, and but even that was a hard transition. Um, so I, I just mentioned that blended model because I think what we're trying to do here is certainly try to meet everybody's needs. Those that um, want to do more face-to-face -face and then certainly answer um, the desire from a lot of our, our members and leaders that say, I don't have time to, you know, come to the council office or or um, somewhere even in my neighborhood to go to a meeting on a particular night at a particular time. So just trying to do uh, what fits best. So I know that's at least what we've done for cookies. So Christine, I'll let you comment too. Yeah, so in, in that realm for, uh, you know, obviously membership program, those kinds of things. So this year we did roll out uh, a few years ago, you know, obviously Girl Scouting 101, that's a GSUSA training, went online. Um, and then we had a secondary training. We right now are um, once a month doing it in person and doing it online. Uh, and I know that, you know, 
some people really like one format or the other. I will say that our, we already have almost as many people who have taken that second level of training that now volunteer essentials than we did all of last year. So it's really exciting because these people have gotten trained a lot quicker um, and, and easier. The new online uh, training that we used um, still has a little glitches and we're, we're, we definitely heard that at a few of the open membership meetings and, and I, I took those back to the people who are running that. They're going to look at making sure those get fixed. So if anybody you hear glitches, please contact the council. Um, but they have been a great addition. They are still in, in person. But we also, Taryn Rimlin, who also has volunteer uh, is under her department. Uh, we were just uh, talking today about how going to try to get volunteers um, service unit uh, members trained on some of the trainer new trainings and things like this. So a service unit can do some in-person things. Um, you know, some people just do learn better. So we will always um, have that opportunity. Uh, I guess the question, so uh, Volunteer Essentials took the place of Leader 101. Um, so we have the two trainings, Girl Scouting 101 and Volunteer Essentials. Volunteer Essentials really does give you the high level stuff of our Volunteer Essentials document, uh, which is uh, ho hopefully something you're all familiar with. Um, and uh, that's what has replaced Leader 101. So Volunteer Essentials is still done in person, along with some other great trainings that are not uh, mandatory. We have some great uh, partner trainings on everything from mental health, uh, to uh, disability awareness that can help troop leaders with, you know, uh, things that they might be dealing with. Uh, along with, we have a great Understanding Journeys uh, training. And uh, so great for new leaders. I just sat in on part of the one uh, that happened here uh, about a week ago. And amazing, those, it is such a great uh, class and, and everyone who's taken it has really loved it. So that's another great in-person training for them to get some of those programs uh, questions answered. So we will always continue to, con to do things in person, but also online so we can meet everybody's needs. So, um, so the current wait, we have a question about the current waiting list. I assume that's for members uh, and Colleen's giving me the nod yes. And so how that worked this year. Uh, so this year we uh, did not take anybody's money who was not placed in a troop. Uh, that was very intentional this year in this transition. Uh, we've over the years heard, you know, when we just couldn't place people, you know, I paid my money and I never got placed in a troop and I want a refund and all these things. Once we take people's membership, it goes directly to GSUSA. And so anytime we've ever had to refund that money, it has come right out of our pockets. We cannot get money back from GSUSA. So this year we knew in the transition we definitely didn't want to do that until people had been placed in a troop. Uh, so we, we definitely did that. We have about uh, 1,200 uh, girls uh, on a list right now that for placement. And uh, our onboarding team, uh, we did get a little behind this year because of e-council shutting down. Um, but they are diligently working um, right now to, we have three staff that are in that department. Those of you who remember um, Ann Kelly, she was this one woman onto herself with some great volunteer registrars, um, but those volunteer registrars have really helped us still this year, and we have three full-time staff just trying to get people placed and, um, and getting them in troops and getting new troops up and going. Uh, so we definitely um, are doing that. We're also uh, still going out and doing community recruitments uh, where we just had some misses this fall. Um, some of it happened because of uh, things changing because of recruitments and stuff, because of the uh, stuff that happened in Charlotte, but also just some places that we weren't successful. So you'll still see some community recruitments coming out there, and our, our focus really is volunteers. Uh, we need to get more volunteers to get more troops going, uh, because to get all those girls placed, you know, there's just no way they could get placed in existing troops. So volunteers is really our focus. You saw all the great stuff that that Colleen's team put out this year. You notice it had a very volunteer. It wasn't come sign your daughter up for Girl Scouts. It was, you know, come find out how to get Girl Scouting, you know, in your school, in your family. Uh, so we are definitely trying to, you know, put the, stop putting the cart before the horse and, and you know, trying to get volunteers first. So we're still working on that. Um, like I said, please just reach out to us at the council if you have any direct concerns about that. 
Oh, Sky. Sorry, thank you. There was a question about Sky. Uh, so, and and this came from the the Sky Committee. Um, Matt, we did have uh, an out, and it was outdoor focused this fall, um, and it it was under a new name, uh, and so it it took the place of Sky. It had archery training and small craft training, and and Phoenix Tower training. So we did have that. Um, the Sky Committee really decided that that's where what people needed, um, and we did um, also partner with uh, Girl Scouts P2P and advertise their um, trainings. They have uh, three trainings that are great. Um, they had Train Fest um, and Leadery, um, which are both weekend um, that are a little closer to how Sky had been run. Um, and then they also have a day um, training that's still coming up here um, at uh, Ginger Cascades called Leader Fest. The one thing, whether it's Girl Scouts P2P or any of our neighboring any of the councils out there, we fully accept any of their training. So if you take their outdoor training or their volunteer training, uh, we'll make sure to translate that over um, into our system. Uh, we definitely know that we can never pick as many weekends as we need to. So partnering with our sister councils on those kinds of events is important to us. Uh, as far as the future of Sky, uh, definitely step. Anderson, our um, outdoor program and property manager, has been meeting with that group of, of people um, and talking about what the future of that of that is. But we did have an adult training. It just looked a little different than it has in years past. So definitely look for lots of great training opportunities um, and we'll keep in tune about what happens with, you know, especially the, the SKY program. And then, guys, I just wanted to mention, had a, um, a kind of a question and comment about, again, kind of on the same issue of adult volunteering and how uh, one of the great greatest challenges, and I think um, certainly we we see it at the council level, and you guys you guys are really living it at the membership level too, is, is how to get more adults involved. And and again, just had um, a, a comment about just how disappointing it was at recruitments that uh, you know you might have some great girl interest, but just was unable to get. A a lot of the adults engage to sign up to be troop leaders and and certainly um, you know we you know need to hear that feedback and I think there were some great tips in here about hey what would be even more helpful is a, um, a more pointed video on the commitment and importance about volunteering um, certainly try to do a little bit of that this year but we need to get better at it and give you guys uh, you know a robust toolkit and I, I think those are some great ideas you know is there something uh, uh, you know, really exciting video that, that would help motivate folks um, to get engaged. Um, and I think, uh, again, just, just some overall comments about it was, it was tough to be in the room. And I know we've all felt that too. Um, so I think you guys are also looking some just resources and even tips on how to, how to transition those adults sitting in that room to, to be volunteers. But Christina, let you comment. Yeah, and then also, I guess, uh, you know, Girl Scout alumni and getting them engaged in, in volunteer opportunities. And, and obviously, uh, whether that is just helping us in an episodic way or also just getting them engaged um, as troop leaders, things like that, you will definitely see us pivoting. And that's the great thing about this new um, system is it really is a great tool to help us with that. Um, you know, we'll be able to uh, do uh, – and when they come and they log into it, there's actually, you know, there'll be opportunities to put little videos and, and hope to get them to, to volunteer. Um, but we do definitely, um, that is high on the list and, and we'll work closely with Colleen's team and her brand marketing group um, to really be able to, to get uh, our focus on volunteers. You know, we say again and again, we don't have a girl for problem we have a volunteer problem and and we know that so definitely keep the suggestions coming um, and and we will uh, try to get uh, better at that looks like it looks like we are coming to the end so I hopefully we're a few minutes over uh, for uh, our stopping time of seven o'clock but we wanted to make sure to answer all of your questions uh, you can, like we said, you can, I know most of you uh, registered through this with uh, Trisha, and so you can always reach out to her, look for her follow-up email. Like she said, she'll be kind of giving a high level of uh, wrap-up of all of these meetings, uh, And but if you guys need anything at any time, just call into that main number at the council office, and we can definitely help you. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really appreciate your time and, and everything that you do for us. So thank you and, and have a good evening. Thank you.